Hello, dear friends. We're sincerely happy to welcome you again, and today we're going to talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, in the previous videos we discussed the influence of subpersonalities, the influence of the dead on life and on people's choices. And of course, people have drawn a lot of parallels, insights and understandings with their lives. All of a sudden they discovered that it really became clear where the spontaneous, seemingly groundless states of emptiness, burdening and apathy are coming from. And the most interesting thing is that, along with these understandings, people came up with additional questions on this very topic. So our viewers hope very much to receive answers to them. And you know, I'd like to begin our conversation today with a fragment of a letter from a girl who actually sent us her story. I recognized myself in one of the recent videos. I also have this dead inside me that torments me with unbearable pain, that makes me want to disappear, and that wants the world to disappear, and the suffering to cease, because it's extremely hard, unbearably hard to live with that. It happens that this pain makes me no longer want anything. Nothing makes me happy. It is so hard that even primary consciousness cannot stand this anymore. But it's not my choice, it's not the choice of a human being. The thing is, I don't want it to be that way. I don't want the world to die, so that I just disappear as the dead inside me hopes, and so that all people die. Igor Mihalovich, if a person recognized himself in what you said, does this mean that he is already doomed and unable to change his situation? If a person, after recognizing himself in the video, is still capable of turning from dead into alive and wants that, what steps should he undertake? What should a person who has noticed in himself the dead that dominates him start with? What to start with? Actually, he has already started. By the very fact, guys, I understand that you are interested in this topic and you would like to know as much as possible. Well, let's try to explain at least the minimum, which will be helpful to you because it's a very big topic. This is indeed a big topic, and it's very profound, due to the fact that it is directly related to our emotional experiences, to our states, and again, our attention. I'll emphasize it again, friends. Our attention, where we invest it, is what it activates. If we invest it in placebo, it activates placebo. If we invest it in nocebo, it activates nocebo. And many people, when they start paying attention, even if they're perfectly well, they can definitely find something. You know, it's like reading a medical encyclopedia, you'll find everything in yourself. Therefore, in this topic too, when we explain, we need to be extremely careful so as not to provoke in people misunderstanding or, let's say, a desire to find in themselves something that isn't there. In regard to the fears induced by people who once lived, let's put it simply, are they dangerous? Sometimes they are. Are they dangerous on a global scale? Definitely. After all, we see what is happening to the world and so forth. Being smart people, we are well aware of the state they are in, despite the fact that they fear the second, ultimate death, or, let's say, the final death. They are still motivated to seize their torment and suffering. This is logical. However, along with this cessation, as it is said, not only will their suffering cease, but so will our prospects. Indeed, it is unrealistic to justify what is happening today in a global sense, simply by someone's selfish or financial interests or by someone's perverted mind. It is really not the case. Why? I'll explain. If the world were a lot freer from the mindsets that have power, Meanwhile, these are indeed mindsets. This background noise that comes from billions of people creates its own egregore, which pretty much affects each and every one. This background noise is extremely negative and it tends towards self-destruction. That's why we have such a world. And that's why everything here is directed not where we would like. For this very reason, since many people understand 
know what's going on and feel. They don't understand, of course, that this is the influence of the dead on consciousness of the living people and what it leads them to, no. People understand in general that the world is wrong, that there is a lot of injustice, that everything is against honor, conscience, and not the way it should be. But at the same time, they do nothing. They are just too preoccupied with themselves and strive for banal survival. After all, this is really so. And here, the factor of the former living is certainly enormous. Do the dead man hinder a person on his spiritual path? Of course they do. It is enough for many people to just take a look. I emphasize, not for everyone, of course. There are a few lucky individuals in this world. But for the majority, it is enough just to look inside, trace how a change of mood happens during the day, and analyze why it happens, who exerts influence with what purpose and why it affects a person in such a way, then everything falls into place. Now let's go back to the question again. What to start with? What to start with? It's a good question. Why? Because a person who has understood and discovered that, despite his desire, despite his will, and despite the objective factors which surround him, an abnormal reaction occurs in him. I mean, a certain dark background appears in him, sort of a sad and doleful one, that prevents the person from living in peace and being relaxed. At the same time, let's say the person wasn't brainwashed by the news coming from TV screens, he didn't read anything negative, he was in a good mood, for example, in the morning, while at lunchtime he wants to cry. Nobody offended or did anything wrong to him, he doesn't have any pain. He has good prospects for tomorrow and other days. Everything is fine. However, he is heavy-hearted, and something is tearing him apart like a cocoon from the inside. And to explain, this background noise, which is literally affecting the person and his emotions, and forces him to quarrel with his relatives and friends. We often notice this in ourselves, and we often notice this in others, those who are next to us, when out of the blue, without any reason, someone, or yourself, my friend, feels sorrow, sadness, and creates conditions for yet another quarrel. What for, it would seem? Or why is a person resentful against the whole world? Or why now? This is especially manifested in adolescence, and there is a reason for that. It is so pronounced that, let's say, many young people discuss the futility of existence and have sort of an overall negative attitude towards life, the world and everything else. In other words, instead of a prospect that young age gives, instead of a healthy and bright look into the future, that future in which a person can manifest his talents, develop and achieve anything, a young person, a modern teenager, sees darkness, he sees fear, he feels in himself an unwillingness to strive for the future. And many young people get thoughts about something bad. Why? The answer certainly lies in what is hidden from our eyes. Yes, from the standpoint of psychology or psychiatry, we can explain this by a negative information background. An overload. Modern youth receive too much information due to advanced modern technologies, social media, and many other things. However, in fact, if we remove it all, and even if we isolate a young person, this state will remain in him. Why? Because that which produces a background noise inside him is the former living, such as you and us. But they are in hell. Well, we, friends, are actually carriers of both heaven and hell at the same time. And this was told to us by those who came here with God's message that it's exactly us who are the temple of God, which 
rests on heaven with its beak, but stands on hell, while we are in the middle, and the choice is up to us to fall into hell or to rise to heaven. Everything is simple, since it's a banal truth. Why? Because the dead require energy. Energy is life. The source of life in a human is the soul. Nowhere will we find anything like this that could give life even to the dead. That's a fact. See how simple everything is? Again, this was written about God knows when, and those who were sent here by the Lord spoke about it in order to bring us to our senses, so that we would make the right choice in our lives. Many people will say that it is hard to choose when there is such a world and such a negative background noise, because it turns out that I feel bad because someone exists in me there. It doesn't live, the dead do not live, but exist, and they hinder me, right? Yes, that it's unfair, we live in such a chosen time, there is so much load, so to say, both the load from consciousness and the information load, and indeed, there is this very unfavorable background. But what is unfair? Here's a simple question. That it is more difficult to approach this love, to feel God's love. And why is it more difficult to approach love? Let's consider what everyone is usually silent about. Yes, I will now consider an unpleasant point, and it will hurt many people. But guys, when we embark on the spiritual path, we must tell the truth and must not be afraid to admit it, including the truth about ourselves, whatever it may be. That's the whole point. Why? Because we must look God in the eye honestly. And that's the point. So let's now talk about something extremely inconvenient. Didn't we feel a surge of God's love and joy coming from within in our childhood? We did feel it. God is merciful and He gives everyone such a chance. And how many of us in childhood let's say, betrayed God by concluding a deal with the devil. Yes, many of us do not remember that. But if we rummage in our storage, you know, in the stash of our thoughts and plunge into our childhood, whatever it was, sad or cheerful, we will find in it that point when we learned about God and when we learned about the devil, while still being little. Yet we did learn it all. Yes, we didn't realize it. Yes, there were some other factors. And sometimes, even not knowing about either God or the devil, we wanted some toy, or we did something wrong, and really didn't want our parents to find this out. And we said to ourselves, making a deal, I would give anything, for mom not to find out that I did something wrong, or I would give and trade anything just to get some toy or some item. Didn't such situations happen? Or we wanted someone's affection or something else. Eventually, mom didn't find out, we got a toy. Sometimes our affection was mutual and we forgot about what we had offered to someone with whom we shouldn't joke. However, when we grew older, we started feeling a background noise, a bad and oppressive background noise that prevents us from living and doesn't make us happy. It pushes us to seek happiness on the outside. And we strove to find a more interesting job, or to climb the social ladder to where we think happiness is. But when we came to where we aspired, we didn't find happiness. Friends, I'll reveal a big secret to you. No one in this world, while being at the top of our social ladder, being a ruler or a magnate, no one is happy. And they try to suppress this inner unhappiness with everything they can. Some of them plunge headlong into some kind of work, others, on the contrary, 
get into all kinds of mischief, including taking alcohol and drugs, whereas still others plunge into some kind of fun and entertainment just to get away from this inner pain. But when they are alone, and even more so when they look in the mirror, they understand their hopelessness. Do you think they are not oppressed? They are. Why? Because they understand that this is a deal, and they understand what they will pay for it. They said many times, I will give away everything, but I want to be there, at the top of this pyramid. And when they climb it, they get what they get. That's the whole point. Therefore, friends, happiness is only in God's love. It doesn't exist anywhere in this world, no matter where we go, no matter what level of the social ladder we climb, or what cave we hide in from people. We cannot escape from Satan. He is in us. And those who are in us, who are the same as we are, the former living, will always be near too. It's just that, as long as a person didn't work on himself, and now I'm answering the question, as long as he did not develop spiritually and did not pay attention to himself, as long as he was far from the knowledge and was guided only by the directives of priests, even if he was religious, when he performed some external rituals, he lived, suffered and didn't know what from. You know, it's like an unspecified diagnosis. They cure him from everything, but he doesn't get better. It's a temporary distraction, as long as a person is distracted. But a little time passes, and everything again occurs in the same way. Why? Because we live and do not know that we are sick, and we don't know what we are suffering from. We attribute it all to anything and everything, to relationships, and immediately our consciousness picks it up and says that somehow our other half is not the way they are supposed to be that it could have been better, why did you do this stupid thing, or vice versa. All your problems are because you don't have the other half, you need to get one. Then you'll have someone to shift your responsibility onto, and so on. Who hasn't come across this? Right, friends? We are always looking for guilty ones on the outside. All our actions are always directed outwards, while the truth lies in the fact that heaven and hell are within us. We are the temple of God, if you have understood what I mean, and what Jesus Christ spoke about. That's the whole point. But when a person embarks on the spiritual path, especially when he receives the knowledge, he begins to analyze, and what seemed to him natural and usual due to some ordinary factors, hormonal surges, or situational moments. But this background noise was always negative, and from time to time it attacked people. So when a person feels this again, he understands and analyzes at the same time that there was no external reason, and even consciousness was silent. But inside there is longing and sadness. And here he begins to ponder that, after embarking on the spiritual path, he feels more acutely the pain and suffering of those who once lived and lived wrongly. And some people start experiencing fear. Won't this background noise get stronger? Won't it win? But in fact, friends, this is a natural process. You always lived like this and always felt it. You simply didn't know what it was. Is it good or bad? I'll put it as follows. This is the proof of God, that proof of heaven and hell which you carry within yourselves. It's up to you to decide whether this is good or bad. But if we look at it from the perspective of a person who is really on the spiritual path, who strives for God's love, who strives for eternity and not to get into someone's body as a hostage and Satan's slave, then this is good. Why? Because 
When you understand and know this essence, you… I'll elaborate on that, friends. One more point, it is very important. When we are striving for God's love, when we as Personalities are striving for the reunion with the Soul, whether we want it or not, we will go through this hellish crowd, through someone else's pain, through someone else's suffering. And when we embark on the spiritual path and walk this road, we feel this pain more acutely. But at the same time, it is in the form of a background noise, it doesn't touch us anymore. We simply hear things that we could have screamed ourselves. But when we choose God's love, we see the light, we see God's love, we see eternity, we see joy, pleasure, and most importantly, true happiness that everyone aspires to. However, being tempted by those very dead, that very consciousness, or some third forces, we often choose what is earthly, make a deal, or simply forget about God. We forget that we are here to gain life, and that our main task here in this world is not to argue with each other, not to win the best place under the sun, which is as finite as everything else in this world. Even Satan is temporary, not to mention those who suffer in his hell. All sufferings are also temporary, but life is eternal. At this very point a person gains happiness and an understanding of the value of life, and when he understands all its complexities, he comes as an adult angel, having gone through hell, and remaining faithful to God's love, remaining faithful to the Lord God. That's the only way one can gain life. And everyone, I emphasize everyone knows this, if they look inside themselves, not into their consciousness, but into their world of deep inner feelings, and there everyone will see that my words are truthful. Only a liar, when addressing a liar in his head, will say that it is not so. But that is his choice. I hope, friends, you understand what I mean. So everything is simple. Therefore, let just love each other, take care of those who can gain life and make people happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you and God's love.